Hi, Horror Studios. You may recognize me as the floppy disk guy. I'm sending you some of my stories. My first one. In seventh grade, I owned an iPod Nano, a fairly odd one. It did not have any alarm clock features. I was playing computer in the office, down the hall from my bedroom. My iPod was on my speaker, which only consisted of a power button and two buttons to control the volume. My iPod just randomly started playing music. I was home alone, and even if someone had turned it on, I would have heard them moving around my room. My second one. In fourth grade, I was over at my friend's house, I'll call him AD. Since we were both in fourth grade, we were immature and highly imaginative, so that makes me doubt the legitimacy of what happened. Although this is unrelated to the story, there is an interesting feature about his house. In his room, inside his closet, there is an entrance to a room. Thinking back, it was likely the space between the wall of the rooms inside the house and the roof. It had writing from the previous owners of the house. Like the average fourth grader, AD thought his house was haunted. He told me a story of how a babysitter was over, watching him and his brother. If I remember correctly, he said something flew across the room into a glass, or maybe it was the glass that flew across the room. So his claims that his house was haunted seemed to have some merit. Anyways, we were in his basement, with all the lights turned off. We were interested to see if something would happen. We had shut the door at the top of the basement stairs, so the only light came from the windows at the far end of the basement hallway. Nothing happened, so we climbed the stairs to turn some of the lights back on. Just before I reached the top of the stairs, I saw a blinding flash of white light. My friend didn't see it, and it was unlike me to imagine such a thing. I'm still not sure if I witnessed something paranormal, or really just imagined it. The third story. I'm not sure when this next story happened. I have a hard time remembering some of the details. It would have been since Christmas in eighth grade, because that's when we got our dog, and he was with me at the time. Anyways, it was just me and my dog home. I was in bed, probably doing something on the computer when I heard, if my memory is correct, the sound of someone opening a door and walking, walking inside maybe, directly below me. My dog heard it too. Nobody had actually come into the house, and it's likely that it's the sound of neighbors opening their side door, which faces the north end of my room. It seemed too loud to be the neighbors though, since I can't think of any instances when I've heard them opening their doors outside. The fourth story. This was in the winter of my freshman year in high school. It was around 9 at night, and I was in the family room practicing a dance routine or some sorts for gym class. I did not want to perform tomorrow, but I knew that I had to practice so I could make it as painless as possible. My dog was with me. From where I was standing, I can look south into the kitchen and see through the kitchen windows on the south side of the house next to the driveway. For whatever reason, I was looking this direction and I saw what looked like the red brake lights of a car passing by through the window and out of view, heading in the direction of the garage. It was so dark out, so I just saw the lights and not the body of the car, though this didn't bother me. I reasoned it was just too dark to see the car itself when there was little light reflecting off of it. My parents weren't home, so I expected the lights to be them returning. My dog saw the lights as well, or he at least seemed to perk up. He often knows if someone has pulled into the garage, even if he doesn't see the car itself. I stopped my practice and waited for my parents to come inside, but they never did. I waited several minutes, but no sign of my parents. I decided I would take action. I grabbed a large pocket knife and went outside to investigate. There was no car to be found. I walked around the garage and the backyard but found absolutely nothing. Had I found an intruder, I doubt I would have had the courage to harm them with my knife. It was mostly just to intimidate them. Considerably freaked out, I went back inside and locked the door. I kept the pocket knife with me and sat down to think over what had just happened. A feeling of dread came over me. 
and a thought, a very strong, prominent thought crossed my mind. I thought about killing myself, and then my dog with my pocket knife. While I suffered and continued to from depression, and sometimes thought about suicide, it was very out of character for me to actually think about how I would kill myself. I normally just thought about the idea in general before forcing it from my mind. I told my parents what happened when they got home, and I would later ask my mom to take my pocket knives and hide them somewhere so I wouldn't be tempted to hurt myself with them. While I cannot prove that the thoughts of suicide were connected to the event, I have a reason to believe that they were. Since I had the knife with me, maybe it was just a fleeting thought to get out of doing this dance in gym tomorrow, but that doesn't explain why I also thought about killing my dog as well. For those of you who are reading or hearing this story who are concerned about me, I promise you that I did not hurt myself, and it's behind me now. The fifth story. My memory is pretty bad on this story. I was on the phone with my friend in the very room where I am typing this story now. I have no idea what we were talking about and don't really care. It's not relevant to the story. All of a sudden, the voice of a little girl cuts in. She only said a few words, and I cannot remember at all what she said. I don't have a little sister, my friend does, but they were not home at the time. He claims he heard the voice of the little girl from within his room, and it did not come from the phone. The last story. This story is a combination of bittersweet and fear. It's a very fond memory, and while I no longer have the entry I recorded later that night, I still remember what happened very well. I was in 8th grade, and on a 3-day field trip to Washington, D.C., we had already left the D.C. area and decided to spend the afternoon at Gettysburg. A very entertaining tour guide boarded our bus and showed us around some back roads through the former battlefields. We saw some memorials, monuments, and heard great stories. We got to run around part of the actual battlefield, doing parkour off the rocks and climbing through rocky alcoves. It was so much fun. That's not the point of the story though, I only mention it because it better explains what we did after dinner. After dinner, we went on a local ghost tour inside and around the house of Jenny Wade, the only civilian killed during the Battle of Gettysburg. I do not wish to explain her story, so I'll probably just send you a link to the story or something. While I was outside, I captured several photographs of orbs and a single photograph of an unknown misty form. My camera occasionally refused to focus, but returned to normal if I faced another direction. While I was inside the house, my friend believes he captured the spirit of Jenny herself in a photo taken on his phone. He doesn't have the photo anymore, but it shows a milky white form, much more defined than the misty shape I had captured. He started crying, which was very out of character for him. I had not seen him cry since he learned his grandmother had died, and I had not seen him cry after that until he became overly involved in high school romance. I had an experience myself in the house, but much weaker than this. I'm not sure if I can ever call it an experience, because it seemed like I could have been subconsciously faking it. I felt a very heavy, depressing presence. I sank down to my knees, not, not understanding what the presence was or or even what it meant. Before he left the property and headed home, I captured one of my best photos while I was there, the other being the mist. Hope you enjoyed your weekend. Look forward to the next live stream so I can fuck shit up again. If you're interested, I uploaded a narration of my first attempt at a creepypasta. I wrote it two years ago, so for some reason decided to upload it. Floppy disk man.